This is Ms. Cotran, graphing ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. In today's lesson, students will review how to graph ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. On a what? Very good. To prepare for chapter three, Mr. Hampton and I decided that we were going to go over how to graph ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. What is this called? It's called the coordinate plane, okay? And what you'll notice about the coordinate plane is it has two axes, okay? The first axis is horizontal, okay? It looks like this. What axis do you think that this is called? What do you think? It's the, it is the X axis. That's right. And we're used to seeing this as a number line, right? Where the middle of the number line or axis is zero, and we have called this the, what axis is it? It's the X axis, so we're going to put an X right there. Go ahead and draw it, right? So you have a horizontal line. And in the positive direction, of course, we have our positive numbers, which are, count with me, one, count, two, three, four, and five. And in the negative direction to the left, we have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Okay, so we've identified that, write this now, the X axis is what kind of a line? It is a horizontal line. Okay, it goes side to side, horizontal like the horizon. Okay, now, the x-axis is a horizontal line where, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. If I'm on the x-axis, okay, I'm going to tell you that there is another axis. Now, do you know what it's called? What's this one called? If it's not x, then it's, this is the y-axis, okay? If I am on the x-axis, let me ask you a question. If I'm on this horizontal line, am I on the y-axis? Yes or no? No, I'm not on the y-axis. So in this situation, if you're actually on the x-axis, your y is going to equal what, do you think? It's going to equal zero, okay? It's going to equal zero, okay? We're going to learn more about that in just a minute. Let's talk about the other axis, okay? If I say the y axis. I am standing straight up. Does that make sense? The y-axis. The y-axis is, what's the opposite of horizontal? Straight up and down is? It's vertical. That's right. So the y-axis, which is here, is a vertical line. Okay? It's a vertical line, and it's, if you label it, you know, when you go up on the y-axis, it'll be one, two, three, four, five. What about when you go down? When you go down, that's negative. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and negative five. Okay? So if you are on the y-axis, okay, are you on the x-axis at all? No. Okay? So the y-axis is where x will equal zero. So when the x-axis, show me the horizontal x-axis, go ahead, show me, okay, and the y-axis intersect, where do you think they intersect at? What is the intersection point, okay? It is at zero, zero, and we call that the, anybody know? It's called the origin, all right? So... When the x and y axes intersect, they intersect at what is called the origin. Okay. And the origin has a very special ordered pair. What do you think it is? They intersect at what? Because this is where x is and this is where y is. It is at Zero, zero. Very good. Okay, so we're going to use this information to now um, talk about quadrants. So here we are again on a coordinate plane. Now when we start to graph points, it's very important that we can identify which region 
of the coordinate plane we are talking about. And if you can see, it is divided into four distinct regions. And we call those quadrants. We call them what? Quadrants. Very good. You probably heard this word before. So I'm going to go through the quadrants one at a time, and we're going to talk about what will happen when you graph those points. So let's talk about quadrant one. Now, one is in Roman numerals, so it looks like an I. All right, if I were to graph a, a coordinate point in this region, what would happen? And remember, the coordinate points, they are in parentheses. You start with X, comma, Y. You're always starting with X. So my question is, what are the X values in this region? They are, what are they? They're positive. Very good. And what about the Y regions? Because you would start at the X axis and then you would go up. So the Y values, this is Y, remember? This is X. The Y values are also positive. Very good. All right. Now, we're going to go over to the left, and this is quadrant, what do you think? It is quadrant two. Very, very good. Okay, I'm um, going to ask you now, if you're going to graph any coordinate pair, you're going to start with the x values. The x values are, they are negative. Very good. Okay, so I'll make it red to show negative. But what about the y values in this quadrant? They are positive. Very good, okay? All right, now we're gonna go down to the left and we're gonna be in quadrant, quadrant three. Very good, and that is Roman numeral three. Okay, tell me about the X values because you're always gonna start with X first. What are the X values? They are negative. Very good. What about the Y values? They're also negative, aren't they? So I'm going to put neg negative comma negative. All right, the last quadrant is quadrant what? Quadrant four, written as IV in Roman numerals. Very good. Tell me about the X coordinate. The X coordinate is going to be positive. What about the Y? It's going to be negative, okay? All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about is how do you remember the order, right? Why do they start one over here and then go two, three, four? Well, you're going to remember the direction by remembering that this is called a coordinate plane. It's called a what? Coordinate plane. Coordinate plane starts with a C, right? Starts with a C. So the way that you would remember this, and I don't know if anyone's ever taught this to you before, but the order one, two, three, four goes like this, just like a C. So you start one, two, three, four, when you are asked to label it on your own. Song break. Just in case you ever forget about the coordinate plane and the quadrants, you could sing a little song to yourself or just listen to me sing this song. It goes like this. The coordinate plane has four quadrants used to graph the coordinates X and Y. That was pretty good, right? No, no comments. Okay, one more time. The coordinate plane has four quadrants used to graph the coordinates X and Y. There you go. So now we're going to practice the skill of graphing coordinate points. Coordinate points are also known as ordered pairs. They're known as what? Ordered pairs. Because when you go to graph a point, there is an order that you have to follow, okay? So which axis do you think you have to start first, okay? Which axis do you think you have to start first? Always on the x-axis. And that's why in ordered pairs, you always start with x first, okay? You have a comma between the two values. So you'll start on the x-axis. If the x is positive, you're going to start on the right. You're going to start where? On the right. And if x is negative, you're going to start on the left. Where? On the left. From that, wherever you are, 
you are going to go on which axis? Which axis? The y-axis. And if y is positive, you're going to go up. And if y is negative, you're going to go you're going to you're going to go down, right? Okay, good. So let us begin. Every point is represented with a letter. So when we go to graph the point, we're going to write that letter. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Let's take a look at A. It says 5, 1, which means where is x 5 and y negative 1? Make a point on that coordinate plane. Here we go. Well, we're going to start with x. Going to start where? x. Where x is 5. And where am I going to go? I'm going to go down. Where am I going to go? I'm going down. I'm going down. Because you went around, baby. My whole world's upside down. Thank you very much. Okay, so, sorry, what were we doing? Oh, that's right. We started at 5 and we're going down 1. Yes. We'll put a point here and we'll label it A. Well, there we go. We did A. Now, let me ask you a question. Which quadrant is point A in? Remember, got to remember your C, right? You start with 1 and you draw a little C in your mind. You say 1, 2, 3. It's in quadrant. What is it? Quadrant 4. That's right, which I'm going to write as a Roman numerals 1V. Let's do the second point or point B. It says we're going to start at negative 3 and we're going to go up 4. All right? So let's start on the horizontal x-axis. You're going to start at negative 3. And then you're going to go where? Because y is positive 4. You're going to go all the way up to 4. So if you start at 3, you're going to go up 4. And we're going to label this B. Are we good? What quadrant is this in? You should be able to know right away. This is where, where is it? Yeah, it's quadrant two. All right, next is two, three. You should already know that if you have two positive, uh, if you have x is positive and y is positive, this is going to be in quadrant, what's this? It's in quadrant one. So we're going to start at where x is two, and then we're going to go up how many? We're going to go up three. Very good. One, two, three. We're going to call that point C. Very good. All right, next. Uh, oh, what quadrant is this in again? It's in quadrant one. Very nice. Now, I wanted to throw some of these in here, like D. What happens when X is zero, but Y is negative five? Where would you go first? Where is x zero? Right in the middle, right? Yeah, in the middle of the number line is where x is zero. And then you're going to go, don't make me sing it again, but I will if you want me to. You're going to go down to negative five. Now, when you uh, put your point D, you're going to ask yourself, and I'm going to ask you, what quadrant is D in? Hmm. Is D in a quadrant? No? Well, then where is D? Where? Isn't it on an axis? Which axis is it on? Ah, it's on the Y axis. You get it? Y axis. Now, listen to me. We've said that the y-axis is where x is 0. Is that true? The y-axis is where x is 0. Yes, because x is 0 and y is negative 5. All right. We're going to do two more points. Next, we're going to do point E, where we have two negative values, where x is negative 4 and y is negative 2. When you have a negative-negative combination, no, it does not make positive. How do you graph it? What quadrant is it in? You should know that it is in quadrant 3. Where is it? Quadrant 3. Okay? So we have negative 4 and negative 2. So we're going to go ahead and start on the y-axis at negative 4. Then we're going to go where? Up or down? To negative 2. We're going to go down to negative 2. We're going to call this point E. Okay. Are we good? Our last uh, point that we're going to graph today is negative 
1, 0. All right, so negative 1, 0. We would have to start at negative 1, correct? Okay, we're going to start at negative 1. Now, y is 0. So are we going to go anywhere from this point? No. Okay, negative 1, 0. Let's look at it. Let's graph the point. It is at point F. If you are, if you don't go up or down on the y-axis, where are you? You're on the x-axis. And let me write this real quick for it, right here, x-axis. Remember, if you're on the x-axis, what does y equal? y equals 0. Does that make sense? Where, okay, the x is where y is 0. And then, oh, the last one, again, for e, sorry, I didn't put this. You have to have quadrant 3, because that's where you have two negative uh, values. All right, so go ahead and get this down. Now, for our last set of examples, we're going to go in the reverse order, which means I'm going to give you a coordinate point, and you are going to tell me where is it located and what quadrant is it in. Are we ready? So let's go ahead and order. Let's start with G. G, first of all, I think it's actually easiest to tell me what quadrant G is in first. What quadrant is this? It starts at all. It's in quadrant one, correct? So we know that we should get two positive values here. Where do we start? How would we read this point? We have to start at the x-axis and we say this is four and it went up how many? One, okay? Four, one. Remember, you start at x and then you have y, okay? Four, one. And both of those are positive values. That's why it's in quadrant one. Let's go ahead and go to h. Where is h? Where is it located? What quadrant? No, it's not on a quadrant, people. Where is it? It's on the y-axis. Where? The y-axis. That's the first thing we're going to write. It's on the y-axis. It's not on a quadrant. So on the y-axis, then, let me ask you a question. What is x? x is, has to be 0, doesn't it? It has to be 0. And let's make sure we're right. Because if we start at 0 and we go up how many? 2. Up 2. Start at 0, go up 2. That is labeled as 0, comma, 2. And that is correct, where x is 0 and y is 2. All right, next. I. What? Uh, where's I? Oh, here it is. Okay, which quadrant is it in? If this is 1, this is? It is 2. Quadrant 2. I didn't mean for these to be in order, but that's okay. Quadrant 2. <laughs> so we're going to start where? x is? Negative 2, and how many did we go up on the y-axis? We looks like we went up to 3, okay? So in quadrant 2, it starts with a negative, and then it goes up to, uh, so negative 2, and it goes up to positive 3. Very good. All right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R, J, right here. So what quadrant is J in? Oh, yes! It happens to be quadrant four. That's right. Okay. So in quadrant four, you start with a positive and then you go down to a negative y value. So where does it begin? It begins at where x is three. What is x? It's three. And you go down how many? Let's see. Three looks like we went down also to negative three. Okay. So 3, negative 3. Are we good? All right. Now let's look for K. Where is K? Which axis can you find K on? It is on the x-axis. And if it's on the x-axis, what is Y? Y has to be what? Y has to be 0. It has to be 0. So I'm going to go ahead and make a zero right here, and let's make sure that we're right. If we are at negative four, okay, on the x-axis, are we going to go up or down? 
We're not going up or down. When we don't go up or down, we don't land in a, in a quadrant. We stay right on the x-axis, and we call that um, at x equals negative 4, okay? All right, and for our last one, we have L, okay? L. And L is in which quadrant? Oh, wait, first. First, we want to say that this is on the x-axis. So, x, x-axis. Okay. All right. And for our last one, which is L, which quadrant do you think it is in? Remember, it starts over here, and it goes 1, 2, 3. And quadrant 3 is where both the x and y value are negative. They're both what? They're both negative. So we start at negative 1 on the x-axis, and then we go down to what? Start at negative 1, go down to, what is it? Negative 3. So we're at negative 1 for the x-axis, and negative 3 for the y. We have um, a negative x and a negative y, that is in quadrant 3. Okay, so go ahead and get that down.